Ladies and gentlemen, this is Bill Board. And I'm Jake Paris, and we're with PNX News. And today we have the pleasure of uh, interviewing the fabulous Miss Mercy, and uh, we're glad you're with us today. Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, uh, you're working on an autobiography, um, I understand. It's not out yet, but you're working on it with your co-author, <laughs> Lindsay Parker. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about Lindsay? Oh, yes. Lindsay Parker. Uh, I've idolized her. I mean, I first saw her at Pamela's party, and then I started watching her on Yahoo. She was on TV then, and she was a Yahoo music editor, and she used to amaze me because she had this flaming red hair, first of all, and that always attracts me. However, she was a little bit different than anybody else. Like, she got very upset when Linda Cohen died in the middle of the news broadcast on... on you know, normal news. And I idolized her, and then we were went out to dinner on, one night, and I said, well, something. She goes, your stories ought to be in a book. And I said, well, you know, that would be great. She goes, well, I'll do it. And I said, okay. So anyway, we agreed to do it. Can you tell us a little bit about the book without giving up too many uh, secrets? Like, uh, what's it about in general? It's basically my life story, which it, it it has name dropping of some famous people in it, uh, same as famous sessions, and it's also about other things that aren't really talked about in any other book. But I want to hear about Hate Ashbury. Yeah. Well, I got to Hate Ashbury. First, I went to North Beach with a girl that was a beatnik in like 10th grade, Money Moore. And uh, she, we would go to North Beach with city lights and all that, but North Beach got infiltrated by the mob and tourists. So they decided to get the heck out of there. And they moved over to uh, across the street from Panhandle Park into a place called the Blue Unicorn, which was a coffee house. And in that coffee house is where all the beats would hang out. And there was also the uh, Longshoreman's acid trip. That was about 66, I believe. And then suddenly uh, everybody was like hippies who, I mean, not hippies, everybody was beatnik, so they were antisocial. And then the younger generation, they moved there because it was low rent. And then the younger generation started to mix. And then Bob Dylan actually plugged in his guitar and made the folk singers or the beatniks very upset. And started like a whole new thing going with the hippies and I don't know where the hippies got their name is it from I'm hip I don't really know but hey Ashbury started the bloom hmm. this is my opinion anyway hey Ashbury was beautiful old Victorian houses beautiful Ooh, log yes it was not a hippie with a rose in their hair and a pair of blue jeans and sandals it was long gowns like the charlatans and we wore that we were called the freaks basically and kind of like an Aubrey Beardsley drawing or um, uh, a Fellini uh, movie, which reminds me, I did the uh, Skidoo from there with Otto Preminger about Jack and Gleason taking acid. I was Ooh. an extra. That was pretty much fun. Oh, yeah. fun. I, think, I think Harry Nielsen did the... Uh, I think he that. did. And Carol Channing was in it. And, oh, I love her. Oh, my God, it was nuts. So we were like free, so we buy all our stuff like at uh, God, Fillmore, you know, Fillmore, the old opera. Uh, long dresses and, and everything and we would go to the Fillmore and the Avalon which started re, uh, United things like the 13th floor elevator with Jefferson Airplane and then Muddy Waters and then Otis Redding and it became quite the scene but then what happened was drugs became and we're not only talking LSD we're talking really hard drugs like meth and a lot of the uh, dealers were found with like their arms cut off independent dealers so the mob basically moved in on that and anyway, I got in trouble for being there, and I was under arrest with the juvenile authorities who told me to come home. I did. They arrested me again, and they gave me a day off, and I ran. Okay, and that's when I met Jim Morrison, actually. He came up, his girlfriend, uh, my friend that lived in my house, Pamela, and the doors were playing um, at the Fillmore, and she came over with Pamela Matt Morrison, and... Uh, and she was the drummer's girlfriend. So then we went to the rehearsal with the Doors, and that's when I sit kind of next to Jim Morrison and go, You met Jim Morrison? Oh, he was right next to me. Oh my God. I, I said, uh, Oh my God, maybe I'm going to change my mind about LA. <laughs> <laughs> so then I, anyway, I, when I ran away, I ran down to Laguna Beach with my first boyfriend, Bernardo, six cover Rolling Stone we're on. 
And uh, then he moved to L.A. And he was living with prostitutes that uh, lived next to a very famous guy named Vito, who started a lot of stuff, dance-wise. He was very famous, and everybody was over, like Sal Minio, all these different people. And uh, so, uh, in his ha in the house next door with all the prostitutes was a really cool chick named Miss Christina Furka. And she ended up being my speed, we did speed together. What speed was down here? It really wasn't common down here. And uh, she became Zappa's uh, unknown, unknown to him, of course, uh, nanny. And so I went up to see her, and the GTOs had already been formed. But when he saw me and Cinderella, he said, "Put them in." So that's how we got there. Oh, cool. The GTOs, um, most of you may be familiar with them. They were. Uh Girls Together Outrageously, that's what GTO stands for, at least on the album cover. And uh, after, after, Outrageously only, da 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 often, da da, any, often, any, oh you want to fill in there. <laughs> but I happen to have the album right here, and this is a, a reprint, and hopefully uh, Mercy uh, gets we some get royalties redo, out of it yeah. eventually. But it's a beautiful, beautifully packaged That's the fat one's me. What did you do in the group? What did we do? We no, wrote did songs. Did you sing or did No, well, we did sing the songs. Okay, that we wrote. He said, sit down and write songs. So Pamela and I basically, a lot of it's spoken word. But Pamela and I basically wrote songs. I worked with Lowell George on one. And on the other one, I, I forgot who put it together with me. I think it, Cinderella did, actually. And that the shock treatments got Rod Stewart. Who, who was not asked to be on it, but made his way in there, and we never heard him sing, because there was Jeff Bick and his other partner, Nicky Hopkins, from, I think The Faces, I'm not really sure, our troupe or whatever group they were in at the time. And Rod just, you know, got up to the microphone and started singing and took away my song, and I said, just let this guy sing. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> this guy. Actually, this rooster thing. We call him Rocky Rooster. <laughs> but, and uh, Lowell George did the other one, and Pamela did two songs too, but most of the rest of it's spoken word. But the mothers are on it. But he, he is an amazing person. He was like the greeter. He he put together everybody. What do you call that? He was like, like an entrepreneur. I, I don't a know. Hub, a scene maker, a he put conduit. Everybody together. Like one day we were walking down the street and Nick was, I already had known Nick Jagger, and Nick was in the studio at Sunset Sound recording and uh, uh, Nick sent somebody out. Somehow we uh, we sent a message to Nick and he came out and got both of us. And they were doing, uh, uh, what were they doing? I think they were doing Sympathy for the Devil. And I said, you're really messing around with the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> Now, one of the songs uh, that you uh, created for the GTO's album um, is a little bit about Brian Jones. It's a, it's a hallucination. <laughs> it's a wish. It's about my first boyfriend, Bernardo, and um, Brian Jones and I having a three-way, basically. <laughs> Which really never happened. Happen? Oh. No. <laughs> I did meet Brian Jones, but no. And the name of that track is... Uh, I have a paintbrush in my hand to color a triangle. She also uh, is credited on the B-side of a single uh, release of Circular Circulation. That is the song, but it's called Mercy's Gym. That's the same song. Okay, I'd love to have a copy of that single. I, my mother did, and I, I've lost it. It's probably worth a lot of money. So, yeah, I'll bet. Now, um, in those days um, when you were the GTO, hanging around with uh, Frank Zappa and things, you also got to know Alice Cooper, right? Wow. Okay, the situation is... Okay, first of all, I must say that I was not a fan of Frank Zappa's yet. Okay, so getting thrown into this group, I, I didn't understand him and how great, I didn't like the mothers at all, because I don't like gimmick groups. I'm sorry, even though I was the biggest gimmick of them all, I, I didn't particularly care for gimmick. Mm -hmm. Gimmick. So anyway, we lived in a uh, motel called Landmark where Janice was found dead later. Um, and there was the Chambers Brothers, there was Shep Gordon that became Alice's manager. Miss Christine was dating Alice. Alice was actually Vince. And um, lots of other people, like 10 years after, uh, Earth, Wind and Fire, everybody stayed at this place. And um, uh, so they started getting influenced by us, basically. And it's in the, in the documentary, Super Duper, Alice Cooper, um, that we actually uh, influenced him. 
Okay. Oh. And Miss Christine would dress him and just, uh, he, he became Alice. I, I heard um, back about 1971 or so, around the time Love It to Death was released, he had a coming out party and somebody popped out of a cake. Yeah, it seemed like it was me. In fact, <laughs> there's a picture of it and you can find it. It's from the Times and you can find it. Uh, I was asked to pop out nude at this Alice Cooper. People thought Alice Cooper was a girl. There was Richard Chamberlain, that great actor that had a crush on that was gay. And there was lots of other people like that, that poet, Rod McEwen. And it was a big end thing. And they thought Alice Cooper was having like a coming out party, but it was a girl. I do want to say in my new book, is it's going to cover some very, 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 very rainy days uh, and some very scary experiences, something that you actually is scary than you actually could see in these bloody movies. I'm, there's there's darkness, believe me. It's not all light, it's not all glitter, it's not all glitz. I've had some really, yes, close, uh, close ones, yes. But stay tuned to PNX News and we'll keep you updated. <laughs> all right, well this has been Bill Board. And Jay Paris. And Miss Mercy, Heidi Oast. And you're watching PNX News. PNX now, News. Back to you in the studio.